If parents have concerns about their children uh, and their safety online, I think it's really important to go to every source possible to learn more about what might be happening and also uh, to report. Um, I did recognize that my son was being groomed and I worked at a school so I talked to the teachers, I talked to the other parents and a lot of the advice I was given was, um, oh don't worry he'll grow out of it, uh, I'll wait till he finds girls, he'll, he won't be on the internet. But I knew it was deeper than that. I knew that there was a predator that was grooming Brack and the other boys. Um, I did report it to the police when I became so concerned. And the police uh, three times said they would check police intelligence. And this sort of gave me a false sense of security. Um, unfortunately, they didn't check police intelligence. Uh, the predator was known to them for prior allegations of rape against a 15-year-old boy, as well as indecent photographs of young boys and also hacking his school computer, um, but they didn't check any of those files. So after I phoned the police, I was you know, in, in regular discussion with Breck about my concerns and then even in, tried to involve other parents. I didn't have enough parents' phone numbers, so my recommendation is to go to the school, make sure you get the school involved. When I involved my school, they basically looked at Breck's school records and said, oh, he, his grades are good, his behavior's good, we don't have any concerns here. But if I were to do it over, I would say I want to have a meeting with the other families. I want to meet the other families. I want to speak to the other parents um, because the parents that I did speak to wanted to brush it under the carpet. They were embarrassed to admit that their son was online, um, maybe more than he should be. And rather than fix the problem, they wanted to keep it hidden from the community. Uh, if I had to do over, I would demand that we get all the parents together and sit down and try to figure out this puzzle and put the pieces together. I didn't know then about CIOP and NSPCC, and you know both of those agencies and others could have you know recognized the grooming that the police didn't recognize. Uh, when I phoned the police, they weren't uh, the people that I spoke to weren't trained in CSE. They weren't um, knowledgeable about online crime, and they also didn't know how to do PNC checks. So they didn't do the PNC checks. I think. I thought that was the highest place in the land that I could go, so my recommendation is to go to as many resources as you can, the school, other friends, parents, um, you know, speak to these different agencies such as CEOP, we can report it online, they will call you back, um, and NSPCC, there's people there to help, as well as going to the police and following up with the police and making sure that they did their PNC check, because I, I thought they did. It's quite difficult because, you know, in those teenage years, there are changes and they're becoming more independent, they're becoming more opinionated. But uh, Breck's personality did change quite extremely within a matter of months. Um, he was always a really good boy. And when he started sort of not listening to my rules, and I, I, you know, I have a fairly amount, you know, strict amount of rules, but, you know, all, you know, sort of family value rules, you know, let's all eat dinner together, get off the internet at certain times, make sure you do your homework first. And he was always good about those. But towards the end, he was more stroppy and acted like I was the bad guy. And I did know his notice his personality was changing. I couldn't tell what bits were him being influenced by the predator and what were ju just traits that happen with normal teenagers wanting to uh, you know, make more of their own decisions. But it happened quite rapidly and Breck would often say, uh, Lewis said I don't have to do chores because I don't make a mess. Lewis says I don't have to finish school because he's going to get me a Microsoft apprenticeship and a job after that. Lewis says this and Lewis says that and um, it almost felt like there was another person trying to parent my child and the predator made me out to be the evil guy. So Breck was then being isolated by his other friends. So a predator will isolate you know, the child from their family and from their friends. Um, I didn't know uh, Breck was being isolated by all of his friends. I only knew of one, but I think that's a real sign if somebody that they've been friends with for years and all of a sudden they're pulling away. Um, if it's more than one friend, if it's also family, it's a sign that the predator is trying to isolate them so that they can groom and manipulate and control um, you know, that child without having anyone else in the way. Uh, 
I think very much so. It's the gut instinct. If um, you know, when you know your child, you know that something's changed, something's different. I had spoken with the predator online, and initially, we had kind of a casual banter. When I would come in, Breck would say, "Hey guys, my mom's here," and the guys would say, "Hey," and it seemed like this older boy um, was always the one that was braver and brave enough to talk to me. And we would chat, and he said he lived in New York, so I would try to ask questions about New York because I was suspicious from the start because because he said he was only 17, going on 18, working for the U.S. government, and the boys were just enamored with all of the lies that he was telling about them doing contract work for the FBI, and you know it just sounded too it sounded like he was too young to be able to have these you know sort of opportunities, but the boys were just looking up to him, and, and he was teaching them things on the computer, and they were learning more than they would learn at school. So initially, you know, I was trying to have a, a casual banter with him and, and get to know him because I was immediately suspicious. His, his avatar's his picture was almost too pretty of a picture, and I thought it was someone older trying to lure young boys. And as time went on, and, you know, Predator didn't like my rules. He didn't like that I made Brett get off in the evenings. He didn't like that I made Brett get off for family activities. He started to resent me. Uh, he didn't have a proper family life growing up, so wouldn't have understood, you know, the way that you know some families do function and do spend time together. He just couldn't grasp that. So he would then try to get you know pull Breck away from us, and he turned. He started you know being quite um, not mouthy, but more. He wasn't as pleasant, and you know he he turned on me and tried to make me up, be out to the, ev the evil one, to the other boys and to Breck. So um, I think most of it, though, from the start, was a gut instinct. And when I called the police, I did have plenty of stories to explain why I was concerned. But because the police weren't trained in CSC, because they didn't know about cyber training, cyber bullying and grooming, um, and cyber crime, and they didn't know how to do PNC checks. Um, you know, it slipped through the system. So it's just so important for parents to make sure that they don't just go to one source when they're concerned. They need to go to the school. They need to, you know, almost demand for help. Schools will want to help. Unfortunately, Breck's school just, because his grades were good and his behavior was good, they didn't recognize that there was a problem. And I tried, you know, to explain, but they, you know, it, it was nothing to do with school to them. But, it, you know, school actually could have helped had I had I you know, persevered because there were other boys at that school being groomed as well. Breck was not the only one. There were you know, possibly 100 boys around the country and even in the US that were being manipulated and controlled and sort of brainwashed by this, you know, by this narcissistic um, you know, he had personality disorder. And you know, so it's important to, to get the school involved, to get other parents involved. Um, it's difficult when you don't know the other parents. That's where you need the help from school and also to contact CEOP and NSPCC because they are trained in CSE. They will recognize the signs and they will help to find the right way to go uh, as well as you know, reporting to the police because uh, in general, the police are there to help. Unfortunately, the people that, that I called didn't, didn't help me and they are retraining. Um, but you have to make sure that you go to every source to try to put the pieces of the puzzle together and not slip through the cracks like our case did.